Isaiah chapter 13. Interesting part we got here. It, I mean, there's so much. There's so much to study that <clears throat> in one chapter, you, you can get the, the second advent. You can get the millennium. You can get the tribulation. You can get, you know, the, the judgment of God upon the nation during Isaiah's time. That's what we're going to see tonight. You're going to see a whole bunch. Again, Isaiah, in this part, the date is given B.C. 713. And the power of Babylon wasn't to about 606. And we're speaking about a nation that's not a nation yet. And we saw a prophecy of a baby that's going to be born without a father, conceived without a father, the virgin birth. Long before that baby even, I mean, the, the virgin birth, you're looking over 700 years yet to happen. And that's the miraculous thing. What's the difference between religion and Jesus Christ? One thing is the empty tomb. You see, a lot of religions have got the manger, but they don't celebrate the empty tomb. Well, we do Easter. Easter is not the empty tomb. Easter is the rabbits hopping around. And then you got a God of prophecy. And when we're in Isaiah and we'll be, Lord willing, in Jeremiah, we're looking at and we've seen prophecy. Rachel, loved by Jacob, God shuts her womb. And finally, God remembers Rachel, the Bible says, to a point. It says that God opens her womb and she gives birth to Joseph and she names Joseph. And she says to, to not completely, but she says to me, and God shall give me another child. And she does. She has one more child. Prophecy. That's what Eve said. God has given me a child, but that was after the baby was born. Prophecy. Fulfilled prophecy. And if all I'm told there are 48 prophecies of the first advent of Jesus Christ and they have been fulfilled totally, 100%. <clears throat> so if all the first advent prophecies of a man named Jesus fulfilled, and there are tons of tribulation passages. There are tons of Second Advent passages. There are tons of millennial passages. There are tons of passages when we finally get to glory. Isaiah 13, 12. This is about Israel. It's Israel in the state of condition they are in Isaiah's time in Jeremiah. It's a future tense. Of the tribulation period coming into the second advent, I will make a man more precious than fine gold. And this is a shortage of man, and we've seen it before. We've seen a passage in the Bible where, where women's, I think it said, four women are going to go up to one man. We'll, eat, we'll, we'll make our own meal. We'll take care of ourselves, but let us be called by their name. There is coming a time in the tribulation period. There's coming a time at the time of, of when Babylon has come. There's a shortage of men. They've been killed. They've been killed by the judgment of God. They've been killed by the Antichrist. They've been killed by Babylon. By the way, we're looking at the tribulation period. Do you realize we're, we're talking about a period called the Babylon? And there's a Babylon spoken about in the book of Revelation in, in the future. Why isn't it called the Assyrian? Because Babylon is still alive. Though the city is dead right now, well, we'll look at that in a moment. You realize... The religion of Babylon is in the churches. The religion in the Babylon uh, is in churches. It's in God's church. It's in religious churches. It's all around. Even a man, man, the gold wed, 
uh, over. I assume it is well defined gold and it's very limited. <clears throat> That's what God says man's going to be. Therefore, God, I will shake the heavens. I can't even imagine that. The planets, the stars are going to shake. They've already been shaken in Revelation chapter 12 when Michael and the devil have a battle in heaven and the devil, the dragon, is cast out with his angels. And the earth shall remove out of her place. The earth is getting out of her orbit. There is going to be a massive, and you find it in the book of Revelation at the end of the tribulation period, there is a massive earthquake that the world will feel. In complete, utter darkness that we've read about, the sun is turned off, the moon is turned off, the stars are turned out, and here comes his light from heaven. It is Jesus Christ coming back as a lion, the tribe of Judah, and there's a great, massive earthquake, and the men are, are, are throwing their idols and images away. We're stuck. We've been caught. We've got the mark. We are afraid. In the wrath of the Lord of hosts, that's God, that's Jesus Christ, Revelation 19. And in the day of his fierce anger, the day, that's the second advent. That is the day of the Lord. And the prophet said, it is a day of darkness. And it shall be as the chase roll. A roe is like a deer and all that. And, and think about that. He's being chased. <laughs> He's afraid. I go this way, that way, this way, that way. I like to watch those videos that come on Facebook. You know, there's lions that are chasing this animal. Or this animal, he, he he's going through the river. And there's, a, there's an alligator or a crocodile that shows up. And everything he does for that animal to get out of that clutches. And that's what it's like. As a sheep that no man taketh up. A sheep is a tame animal. But when he has no shepherd, he has no guidance. He doesn't know where he's going. He doesn't know what he's doing. I talked or uh, I heard from a shepherd or an illustration from a preacher about a shepherd is that you can take a gate and a fence. And you can move that gate over five foot. It's the same gate, you just move it over. And that sheep will stand there looking at it like, what do I do? Because sheep are dumb animals. And when God said, I'm going to liken my creation, I'm going to liken my people, what, 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 of all the animals out down there in that earth, but what could I like the most stupidest one? Sheep can't clean themselves. Sheep will go out and get lost and not know how to get home. The sheep don't even know how to get calm. The Bible says in, in, the, in the 23rd Psalm, he maketh him to lay down. <clears throat> They're going to be dumb. I don't mean without voice. I mean dumb is at the end of the tribulation period. What, what do we do? Here comes God. No man take it up. They shall, they shall every man turn to his own people <clears throat> and flee everyone to his own land. Well, there's going to be no getting together unity of, of the people. They're going to go back to their people. They're going to go back home. A sheep can't find his way home, but they're going to. <clears throat> and also think about it here, you know, the, the heavens are being shaken. The earth is being shaken. It's darkness. They're leaving. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. 
take an instrument, cut right through. Everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Revelation 13, 10. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces. Now this will happen, and this happened during the, the uh, Israel of Assyria. This will happen with Judah, with Babylon. <clears throat> This is going to happen in the tribulation period with the Jewish people. In the tribulation period. Well, we just had the second advent reference of verse 13. Now we're looking back into the tribulation, 14, 15, 16. It's not put in chronicle order. You got to rightly divide the Bible says you're going to be made ashamed. And one of the things you can be ashamed, well, they look forward to Calvary. Shut up. How do we get from verse 13? We're looking at the second advent of Jesus Christ. And in 14, 15, 16, we're back in the tribulation again. Hey, you can get some messed up doctrine if you're going to go that way. <clears throat> Shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes, and it will happen. Their houses shall be spoiled. It will happen in Isaiah's time. It will happen in Jeremiah's time, and it will happen during the, the Antichrist. Time. Listen, the, the Antichrist. We've got such a great church building. We're so pleased with our church building. When the rapture happens, the Antichrist will be like, "Hey, I got some great buildings here." I would think it would be interesting, great, if the devil takes Bible-believing Baptist church builders and uses them for the marking facilities. Just remove the, the hymn books in the Bible. Oh, great, our church is. All right, everybody set up for the mark of the base. Go down to the, to, the, to the Baptist church on the corner and you'll be there to receive the mark. And that King James Bible believing church will be a mockery before the people that come to, to celebrate and worship the image of the beast and the number and the mark. Ha <laughs> ha, see where these people met. <laughs> That'd be quite funny. You don't have to believe that. That's my own five cents. That'd be interesting, though. That our great suspended church buildings will be used for the Antichrist. Or maybe just destroyed outright. That church represented Jesus Christ. Burn it. Burn it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's going to have complete hate. Either he's going to use the buildings for complete defiance against God. Or he's just going to get rid of the building totally. You can't get rid of the people of the church. They're gone. Woe be to the people that are left behind in the church when the Lord comes. I always thought it would be interesting rabbit trails. The Lord comes right in the middle of the service. Shall we gather? Boom! And the pastor's still at the pulpit at the podium. Somebody's got some explaining to do. We just had four people got saved. Boom! Dun, dun, dun. And the pastor and those four people are still there in the church. Somebody's got some explaining to do. Because if you're left behind, you're not saved. Interesting. And their wives ravage. It's going to happen during Isaiah's time. I mean, when... when Assyria comes to, to Israel and the Babylonians come from Judah. And, and think about their wife ravage. The Antichrist is people are going to hate the Jews so much, but they're going to rape the women. Oh, that's impossible. You know, Adolf Hitler hated the Jews. Absolutely hated the Jews. And yet when you see pictures of the concentration camps, you will see each one of them Jews naked. Check out the books. Check out the pictures. And don't tell me that none of those SS troops, those Nazi troops, did not take any of those naked women and had their way with them. Though they hated them. 
Now, I could be wrong, but every picture I've seen of the Jewish people in the concentration camps, I, they were naked. After they had their teeth bashed in to get the gold. You realize how wicked and vile the, the Assyrians were as a military? You want to talk about torture. They were the, the head of the head of the head to be of their, their captives. Taking their captives that, that, that they took in war and burying them in the sand for, for the wild animals. Behold. You know, he said, well, that's, that's, not, that's not rabbit trip. This, this is what's going to happen with the Syria attack on Israel and the, and the Babylonian attack on, on Judah and the Roman attack on Israel and the Antichrist attack. That's what we're reading about in verses 12 to 16. Man is great at torture. Behold. Now we're change. We're not gonna change now. Behold, I will. God will stir. That. You see that? Will I will? I'm mar I'm going through my Bible and I'm marking those. God saying, "I will." Everybody says, "You know what's the will of God?" There's a will of God right there. And you know what? That's a prophecy right there. I will stir up the Medes against them, Babylon. Who attacked Babylon when Jeremiah said, this is the handwriting on the wall? After Belton Sizer had his, his orgy, his party with the Lord's stuff. The Medes. You see verses 10 to uh, 16 to 17, you see that space in there? That's about 70 years that, that Judah was in captivity. That's a pretty long period between at the end of 16 and going to 17. That period is, is almost about a little over 70 years. Remember when we talked about Isaiah, his wife, and she, and she gave birth? Remember that period was nine months? 16 to 17 is going over that period of seven year, 70 years that Judah would be in captivity. And at the end of the captivity, here comes the Medes. Babylon is not even a nation yet. Babylon has not even come once, never mind the three times, to sack Judah. Imagine God in his prophecy prophesying about something that has not even happened yet. And when you get that, uh, that uh, I believe it's a Gog and Magog, I think I'll be coming in Ezekiel. And very few notes of Scofield Bible are, are well and good. Very few. Many are wrong. But there's a Schofield note, I believe, I think it's God, or may God, when we get to Ezekiel, Lord willing. And many believe it's Russia. And the Schofield note is, there's not even a Russia. Russia was even in its infancy. You realize, before, long before America, That it is said that Jake uh, that uh, Japheth will dwell in the tents of uh, of Shem. I believe that's America, and Ham will be his servant. You know how many years before America became a nation when um, when 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 we came over here and, and we overpowered the Native Americans, which are of the children of Shem. And and Ham and Canaan will be our servants. And then after that, we, we started having the slave from Africa. I believe that's a prophecy of America. European coming over to, to the Native American and then going back to Africa and getting slaves. That's a prophecy fulfilled if that prophecy fits to America. This is prophecy. 
exact prophecy that will happen. Which shall not regard silver. That's quite interesting because the last event in Babylon recorded by Daniel is they're drinking from the silver and the golden vessels that were gods from the temple. That's the last thing that Belshazzar held. Which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall have no, they shall not delight in it. You can't buy off the Medes. You can't buy off God either. Their bows, army, also shall dash the young men to pieces. Go back to verse 16. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces. You're going to reap what you sow. That verse 16 is the Babylonian captivity. At the end of the Babylon captivity, is that what you did to my people? I will curse them that curse you. You Galatians 6, 7. They shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. The children also shall be dashed to pieces. That's sowing and reaping. Their eye shall not spare children. Run back to verse 16 again. And Babylon. That's the Babylon you see in Revelation too. The glory of kingdoms. That's the Babylon you see in Revelation. The mighty Babylon's fallen. Alas, alas, that great city. It has the cinnamon, has the souls of men, it has wood, it has everything. Alas, it's been destroyed. Now do you see why we don't take one chapter a night when we can't do one chapter a night? Jesus told the devil, he says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. There are people out there, we, we, look at all the studies we did in the Bible. Really? Bible study is not quantity. It's quality. Precept upon precept, the precept upon precept, a line upon a line, here that, you know. The beauty of the Chaldean's excellency. I mean, one of the seven wonders of the world was the hanging gardens of Babylon. The, the, the men and women and the people that built Babylon built the city in a place that's... It's, they brought their own irrigation. I know they had the, the rivers. And I, I, I think I've told or read somewhere that those guard, those hanging gardens of Babylon was for the guy's wife. It's destroyed. Shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. You find that in Revelation 18, 8 and 19, 1. What is the splendor of Babylon ruined? What is the splendor of Sodom and Gomorrah? You go over there today and, and, and it, it's ruined and, and you can go up to a piece of, of rock and you can dig out and, and they'll show you. And there's a place over here in the land that I would, you have to set up appointment. But they got a chunk of rock or something. You can dig out I'm trying to think the the uh, the sulfur. Exactly what the Bible said: hellstone and sulfur, brimstone. I don't think Solomon and Gomorrah was a beautiful city. I think I think Solomon and Gomorrah there is what happened afterwards. 
Babylon was a gorgeous city, the Bible said. Excellency, beauty. You go over there today and you take the unholy <laughs> tour of Babylon. It won't be that. Here's a prophecy, still yet in practice, that it's past prophecy, and yet it's still present. It shall never be inhabited. You can go over there and visit, but you're not going to live there. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Bacon. Neither shall the Arabian, Ishmael, pitch a tent there. Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. I mean, they may pass through, but they're not going to make it a dwelling place. It's not a place to stay. It's not a place to make home. But the wild beasts of the desert shall lie there. Animals. Their houses shall be full of doleful. Sorrowful, grief, creatures. That's the first sign creatures shows up. And owls shall dwell there. And satires. That's the half man, half goat. That fits right up there in the world of, of the unicorns. Oh, the Bible can't have half man, half goat. The Bible can't have unicorns, but your movies and your perverted books that Christians read can. You know, right now, science is in the process of, of uh, is it eugenics or whatever it's called, DNA. You know, in the process right now, scientists are, are, are mixing animals and human DNA together. That's Zechariah 5, 9, Revelation 17, 5. It's amazing how the world can have, but the Bible can't. I believe Leviathan is not an elephant. I believe it's the devil. Or hippopotamus. <laughs> that description is not a hippopotamus. I never, well, actually, I've seen a hippopotamus in a zoo. And the wild beasts of the islands. I don't know what that islands are shall cry in their desolate houses. That's the house in Babylon. Empty. And the dragons. Ooh. That would be the lizards and animals like. In their pleasant places. <laughs> Here's a royal. I, can you imagine? And I, I don't, I've never been, I'm just, I don't know about that room where Bell Sizer was. I don't know where where it is today. Even if it's there, if it's not. But let's, let's think about a moment. The the place where Bell Sizer is. You know, Daniel saw the handwriting. Imagine that place right there, and there's there's a gecko, dragon lizard, and an owl up there. Mm. Mm. And men may pass through, but they ain't gonna stay there no longer. The wonderful book of Daniel, and it's a wonderful, great book, but no one said, well, let's go make a pilgrimage where Daniel was. Have you ever heard that? Let's go find a house where Daniel knelt down and opened his, his window three times a day towards, well, where, you know, where is the den of lions? And we can go see where Daniel was. Where's the fiery furnace where Shadrach, Meshach, Indigo, and Jesus was in? Where, let us go see it. Isaiah says you're not going to. They're pleasant places. They're great places. They're wonderful places. And her time is near to come. Her time hasn't even come yet. And the end is, is, is about to come, God says. Babylon is not yet in Isaiah 13, and God says it's gonna it's gonna fall. Wait a minute, God. Give it time to be Yeah, I'll give it time, and I'm gonna tell about his destruction. 
Let's see Allah do that. Let's see all the millions of, of gods and goddesses of, of India. Let's see them do that. Let's see Baloni Angel do that. Let's see Zeus. Let's see the mighty gods of America. And they don't even know how to how to handle COVID-19. And her time is near to come and her day shall not prolong. She hasn't even started yet. And God says, you're already finished. Now, take Babylon in her infancy and take Babylon in her splendor and take Babylon towards the end of her destruction. Uh, this is five cents. You don't have to believe this. You don't have, but let's. <clears throat> and you get a smart aleck Bible preacher like me who loves the Bible. Loves God. And somebody's got the Isaiah scroll, scroll not chapter 13. They, they weren't marked in chapter 13. But somebody's got the scroll with what we're reading right now. I mean, after all, the Ethiopian eunuch had Isaiah 53, didn't he? Can you imagine someone taking, I don't know how they, I don't know how they say, we're going to say chapter 13 because that's how it's marked. I don't know how they identified passages in the Bible when there was no chapters. In verses, but we'll say chapter 13. I hope, hope you know what I'm saying. Somebody has the scroll with chapter 13. You imagine somebody going to the Babylonian government and say, This government's going to fall one day. You better not keep on going the way you're going because you're going to fall, Jehovah said, and, and quote what we're reading. You said, Well, that's kind of foolish. I take the Bible today, and I go before the city of Daytona Beach, and I tell you what your end's going to be. It's going to be hell if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I quote the scripture. And I'll put posts on Facebook, and I will write the brand new presidents that come into the inauguration after January 20. I will write to them and tell them, welcome to the office of the president. Your family is on my prayer list. I am sending you some gospel tracts. Please believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And, you know, I got a couple issues I, I like for you to deal with the president. And then let me tell you something important as a president of the United States. Let me give you warning. The Bible says that Israel is God's people. He will curse them that curse you. He will bless them that bless you. Whatever you do in your four years and maybe four years more to go after that, whatever you do, sir, don't mess with Israel. Because the Bible says if you mess with Israel, I'm going to curse you. And I, give, I will give chapter and verse in the Bible. And God, before God judges any nation, he warns that nation. Daniel warned Belsizer, and this wasn't really much of a warning. But Ezekiel was running around too. Ezekiel was a post-exilic preacher, which means he was there in, in Babylon when Israel was brought to Babylon, even as the temple was being destroyed. God sent preachers, and he was preaching. And I can picture somebody coming up with Isaiah 13 and saying, this play, hey, you better get right. You better do right. We just start as a nation. What are you talking about? I know. And you got to wonder. And like I said, we're calling it Isaiah 13. I don't know how they marked the script. But can you imagine if Daniel had Isaiah 13 that night, that week? Can you imagine Daniel any point of time before, during, and after? I forget what chapter it is. But the handwriting on the wall chapter. Can you imagine at some point Daniel came along and behold, I will stir up the meads. 
Or did God call that to mean when the Medes came and after the Medes come or before the Medes? When Daniel was hired, hired, I'll give you a golden chain, I'll give you, what's the handwriting wall? Well, you imagine God saying to him, behold, I will stir up against the Medes, against them. Them, not Daniel. Are you saying that God, I, I'm not saying God did, but I wonder if God did. We're not even at Daniel yet. In time. Now, uh, let me run over here real quick. Stay where you are. Where's my Daniel? There he is. Daniel got out of my Bible. All right. Well, let me, I, I'm going to take these dates. They're very reliable. Let me find uh, Daniel. Seventy weeks. By the way, seventy weeks. Daniel nine. The Medes. Oh, where is it? Where is it? In my Bible. Daniel. I need to. All right. Daniel chapter five. Medi, Medi, tackle your thriving. And verse 31, the diaries, the meeting took the kingdom being about three square. That's what we just read in Isaiah. This says B.C. 538 in Daniel. We're reading B.C. 713. Can I round off? Because <laughs> I'm terrible in math in my head. I can't access my, my calculator out here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Let me. Let's. I, 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 listen, this guy's his date is is in the Bible. I, I'm sure it's re reliable. Let me figure this out. Make sure I hit the right numbers. Between Isaiah seven, Isaiah thirteen. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them. B.C. seven thirteen. And Daniel. Where Dyrus the meeting came in Daniel 5, B.C. 538. That's 175 years. Why do I believe the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Prophecy. Allah doesn't do it. Zeus didn't do it. The Mormons don't do it. The Jehovah Witnesses don't do it. Mary Baker Eddy didn't do it. The Catholics don't do it. You know, Catholics, you know how many years the Pope come? Peace be to you. Peace be to you. Peace be to you. Peace be to you. And then how many wars the Catholic Church started themselves? United Nations, we will break our proud share and we will bring. You know how many wars have been since the United Nations have been founded? What did I say? 175. 75 years later, the prophecy of Isaiah 13, 17 happens in, what did I say, Daniel chapter 5? That's my God. That's my God that says, I'm going to be born of a virgin. That's first advent. We haven't got to the advents and God already says Babylon's going to fall. I read in the book of Revelation, Babylon's going to fall. Guess what's going to happen to Babylon? It's going to fall. I have the God that seen to yesterday, that seen tomorrow from the beginning. That's the difference between God and religion.